Sailors and Marines depend on advanced sensors to surveil and attack in the modern battle space. We talked with Greg Teitelbaum and Northrop Grumman about it. So there are lots of discussions at the show this week, as well as at the DOD, about the challenges facing the sea services. So some of those challenges are long-standing, others are new related to geopolitical shifts. How is Northrop Grumman addressing these challenges for the Marines and the Navy? Yeah, so it's a great question. And I'll start with the Navy. Yeah, I think the Navy's got a really interesting mission, right? They're playing an away game. They're far away from America's shores. Uh, and I think what you're seeing in today's environment is they're <clears throat> facing an increasingly complex contested environment. And so if you look at what's happening in the Red Sea over the last year and a half, uh, it's validating that the threats that the U.S. and its allies face are real. Uh, and when you couple that with the increasing posturing and threats of places like Russia and China, it creates a really complex and uh, nuanced set of uh, requirements that the Navy needs to navigate through to execute their missions. And, I think we at Northrop Grumman have a long-standing partnership with the Navy and a lot of unique capabilities and, and expertise that we can bring in partnership with the Navy uh, to help them solve some of those missions. Very good. So tell us about some of the, the radars and sensors you're providing to the Navy, like the CWIP. Sure, sure. So uh, I'll start with CWIP, right? So CWIP is the Surface Electronic Warfare Improvement Program. And CWIP is the Navy's approach uh, to a series of block upgrades to the uh, Slick 32 electronic warfare suite that's on surface ships. And so we at Northrop Grumman developed CWIP Block 3. That's the newest uh, capability uh, in the CWIP upgrades. Um, and it's really a game-changing electronic attack capability. And so uh, if you look at the types of threats uh, that the Navy faces, the ability for electronic attack to add a new layer of ship defense, right? So uh, in many cases, if you read about what's going on in the Red Sea, Right. And we're doing what we would call hard kill intercepts. That's launching an interceptor to take out an inbound threat kinetically. Uh, and what CWEB Block 3 really brings is a non-kinetic way of defeating those threats using just RF energy. And so I think it's a great supplement to the hard kill capabilities the Navy already has and giving uh, the commanding officer and his or her crew flexibility and layers of defense to defeat those threats um, is really a game-changing thing that CWEB Block 3 uh, mm -hmm. brings. And so uh, we've been on that project for about 10 years and delivering that capability. And what we're working on now is uh, proliferating those type of capabilities across a, a family of systems. And so uh, one of those is the Scaled Onboard Electronic Attack, or SOEA. Uh, and this is taking a lot of those same capabilities you'd find in the CWIP Block 3 uh, and making them much smaller. So we can install that on lots of different types of ships, right? CWIP Block 3 is pretty incredible, but it's a large system, takes up a lot of space and a lot of power. And so how do we find ways to proliferate that incredible game-changing capability to many different platforms? And I think when you look at what we've learned on CWIP Block 3 for the last 10 years, a lot of that expertise, that learning, that knowledge, maximizing the commonality for what we're bringing to SOEA uh, really provides us an ability to get a very low-risk, mature capability quickly out mm -hmm. to the fleet. So we're really excited for what we do today on CWIP Block 3 and what we look to offer in terms of uh, scaled onboard electronic attack. Thanks, Greg. And you also wanted to talk a little bit about FXR. Yeah, so I uh, talked a little bit about CWIP Block 3 and what it does in the non-kinetic realm. Um, and as I mentioned, in the kinetic realm, in order to be able to fire an interceptor and, and take out an inbound threat, you need to have an active track on that inbound uh, threat to the ship. And so that's really done with the radar mission. At Northrop Grumman, for the last 25 years, de designed, developed, produced, uh, and upgraded the SPQ-9B or SPOOP-9B, which is the Navy's current X-band radar on maritime ships. Um, and we're really proud of that partnership that we've had with the Navy for a long time. That's the radar that's out in the Red Sea today performing that mission. The Navy recognizes, though, that uh, they'll need to bring additional capability to the X-Band radar mission, uh, and they're pursuing a new program called Future X-Band Radar, or FXR. And so at Northrop Grumman, we're taking what we've learned, partnering with the Navy over the last 25 years on the X-Band uh, surface mission, uh, and partnering with that, our expect expertise in active electronically scanned arrays, or AESAs, those type of radars. Uh, that's a core capability that we have at Northrop Grumman. We build hundreds and thousands of those for uh, different domains, sea to space. Uh, and we really want to combine those two things, right? What we know about the Navy's mission in the X-band environment, and also what we know about making the world's most advanced X-band AESAs for other domains. The Marine Corps, as the tip of the spear, has their own challenges ahead of them. Tell us about what you're providing to help the Marine Corps address their challenges. Sure, sure. So, you know, the Marine Corps uh, has another really 
exceptionally challenging mission. They have to be that tip of the spear. Uh, so they're also operating, you know, very forwardly deployed, um, and they need to be really expeditionary. They need to be able to get in and out of places quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do a lot for the Marine Corps across North and Grumman, but one of the things I think we're most proud of is production of the TPS-80 ground air task oriented radar, or Gator. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we got a, a Gator model here spinning. Uh, uh, Gator is an, an awesome example of one of those uh, AESAs, uh, AESA radars that we make um, that has exceptional capability. It replaces five different radars that supported the legacy missions of the Marine Corps, uh, all in one radar that's capable of doing all five simultaneously. Uh, and not only is it able to do all five of those missions, 